Welcome to the Coastal Kitchen. Hi, I'm Karen Meshures, and today I was given a little bit of a challenge to use one main ingredient in everything I'm cooking. And I have, but I'm not using it in my dessert because I couldn't figure out how to do a mushroom dessert just right. So today we're using the mushroom. I am making mushroom soup today. I am going to make marinated mushrooms to put on my salad or as versatile as it is, we can use it as an appetizer. We're also going to have a stuffed mushroom with spicy sausage. And for dessert, I'm going to make a peach fool. I'll tell you about that later. So let's get started with our mushrooms. I have gotten two pounds, which looks like a tremendous amount of mushrooms, but you know they do shrink. Um, the first thing I did was I brushed all the dirt off. It usually doesn't get on the inside from the way that they're picked. And you can use a little mushroom brush or a nice soft paint brush. On this, just make a nice thick slice, throw it in. I've used the stems also. I've just chopped those up, put them in, and we are going to um, use both white mushrooms and portobello mushrooms in our mushroom soup. All right, last one here. And I'm going to start my water. And mushrooms have a lot of water in them, so they don't stick. I'm putting a cup of water and five tablespoons of unsalted butter in my pan. So I've got that. Now, portobellos, there are baby bellas, there are the great big ones. You can see the difference. Um, they have been cleaned and I'm just going to chop these into pieces because they're a little bit thicker. Let's get these. This is from the big one that I started chopping. I wanted to save it so you could see how big these things really are. They're very meaty. There's been many occasions that I will uh, saute a big portobello and use it as my main meat source. Tastes exactly like steak if you cook it right. All right, let's check this out. Okay, starting to go. While it's doing that, I'm taking two cups of milk, just whole milk, putting it in a tall pan, and I'm going to turn this on real fast. And I want to put it on low because I just want it to scald. I don't want it to boil. Okay, my butter is almost melted. And so I'm going to put my mushrooms in. That's one. And now my portobellos. Let's grab all the pieces here. We're just going to let these cook down for about seven minutes. Want all the juices to um, come out of the mushrooms and we want all the water to evaporate. So let's let these get going here. In the meantime, we're going to add a shallot in just a few minutes. So I've got a pretty large one here. I'm just going to give that a quick chop. Looks like we're pretty well done there. Now, need to put just a tiny pinch of salt in and give it another little stir. You can see the juices. Everything is coming up nicely. All right, that's going to be cooking for a few minutes. Let me grab my pot. This is what we're going to actually cook the soup in. All right, let's turn this on real fast. Woo! Little pop, gonna put it on low. Okay, these mushrooms are looking great. I'm gonna put them down as low as I can go to just let them simmer and get some of that liquid out of there. My butter is melted. My, it's good and scalded. 
So let's turn that off real fast. We're going to make a roux for our soup. And in the butter, I'm adding some flour. And I'm going to start stirring. I just want this to really come together. Sort of like making gravy. All right, now that I've got all the flour mixed together, it's ready for some milk. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in about a half a cup and start whisking. All comes together. That flour starts to make the paste. Add a little bit more. Keep whisking the whole time you're doing it. Smooth and creamy. Now we're going to add five cups of chicken broth to the entire soup mixture, but I'm only going to add about three cups right now. Just keep whisking. All right. We're going to bring this up to where it's scalding too, but not boiling. So let's leave that sit for just a minute. Take another look at my mushrooms. And most of the liquid is starting to evaporate. While we've got that going, let me grab a plate. I'm going to take about half of my mushrooms out and just let them sit on this plate. That should be about enough right there. We're going to put this right here. I'm going to let the rest of this evaporate while I put my shallots in. So let's grab the shallots. Okay. Nice little stir. We're going to let these shallots get tender, opaque. All right, we're going to let that sit for a minute, and while that's sitting, I've got to get some garlic ready. Let's grab a knife. And the only thing I'm going to do is give it a nice squish, take the skins off, and it's going to go straight in. Don't have to do anything more than this. Just give it a nice squish. Okay, if you want to run your knife through it a couple times, that's good too. So no, no biggie. Just do it the way you like it. Goes right in. Give it another stir. All the moisture is just about out of these mushrooms. We'll give this about two minutes in the pan with the mushrooms. And then we're going to put it right in our milk mixture. Okay, now this is just about ready. And you can take your milk mixture and pour it right in your pan. But I really want to use my big pot for my soup. So I'm going to take my mushrooms and put them right in my mixture. Okay. Now I'm just going to whisk. It's starting to look like mushroom soup. Nice and thick and creamy. It's going to simmer for about an hour and some of this liquid is going to evaporate but it's all going to keep the flavor in there so I'm putting the rest of my chicken stock in. Nice whisk. We're going to let this simmer for an hour 
and then we're going to come back and finish it. I'm going to take a short break to clean up and set up to do our wonderful marinated mushrooms. See you in a few. Most people couldn't fit 200 local farms on their table. Well, that's where we come in. For the very best of everything local, Lowe's Foods. Welcome back. I've already started on these marinated mushrooms. So um, I have taken a shallot and I have grated it. And the one thing about grating a shallot, it just about liquefies. So I am going to take the last little bit that I have and I'm just going to chop it up because I want some substance to this. And I'm going to take that big one out. All right, that's about ready. I've got sour cream, and that's the basis for this marinade. It also makes a wonderful appetizer. You can put this on a salad. You can eat it just on the toothpicks. Okay, let's put in some tarragon. Then put in some salt. Pepper and some lemon juice. This is so easy and it tastes so good. All right. Let's make sure those seeds don't go in there. The shallot. This is just one bowl easy. All right. Now we're going to mix this up real good. Tarragon has got such a wonderful smell. It's got a little bit of that licorice flavor and it really almost gives you a feeling of being in the dill family. White button mushrooms cleaned and I have cut the little tough spot off of the bottom of the stem. I've left as much stem in as I can. Want this coated completely and I'm going to put a little bit of saran wrap over the top. It's going to go in the refrigerator for about two hours. It really needs to marinate that long. I really like to let it go overnight. You just have to mix it up again before you serve it. Okay, all done. So easy. Let's get this into the fridge and start on our mushrooms that are stuffed. All right, it's time for stuffed mushrooms. Let's turn this butter on real fast. I'm gonna get it on medium and it's pre-melted, but I'm melting it again, so we're good to go. We're doing stuffed mushroom caps and I've got some nice sized ones here and all I've done is cleaned them like we did before. I've got the stems out. All you have to do is rock it back and forth and it'll come right out. So let's put my 24 there. I've got two more that I have actually taken aside and I'm just going to chop them up just into pieces because I want to keep this for my stuffing mixture. So I've got mushrooms in the mushrooms. All right, mushrooms are ready. What I'm going to do is take my pan, roll my butter around, it's getting nice and golden, and I'm just going to place my mushrooms with the top side down in the pan and let them cook for a few minutes. Okay, while that's going, I'm going to cut up some shallot also because all this goes into one, one dish just like our mushrooms that are marinated. Okay, onions are ready. Let's get my pan back over here because my mushrooms probably are getting close. Let's take a quick look. Okay, tops are done. Now I'm gonna turn them over Just want a little bit of that butter on there. All right, let's take 
some of these out real fast. I'm going to put them back on my tray. Tell how lovely they are. All right, last one. Let's get that right there. Now, this is very simple and quick. We're going to take our onions. Right in. Actually, it's a shallot, but it smells like an onion, sort of. We're going to take a little tiny bit of wine. Even though there's a little tiny bit of butter, I want to put just a little wine in there with the onion. I'm going to put the reserved mushrooms in with the shallot. Now it's time to put in a little bit of my other ingredients. I've got some lovely spicy sausage right here. I've already cooked it and I'm going to put about a cup of sausage in this pan. And that should do it. Let's stir this around a minute. I'm going to put a tiny bit of chicken stock just to give it a little moisture. Add a few more flavors. All right, white pepper. Garlic powder. And I've got a cup of breadcrumbs. So we're going to take, just slide that right in too. Now it's time for a little bit of zest. Let's take some lime juice. And I'm going to use about two tablespoons of lime juice. Takes about a lime. So just All right, that should do it. Now let's mix that up. Just a little bit more chicken stock. Want it to be moist. I'm gonna let this set for just a second. The only thing I've got left to do is get about a tablespoon of parsley before I start making the little balls that are gonna go inside of our um, mushrooms. Real easy way to measure. All right, just good chop on the parsley. One about a tablespoon. Okay, nice and chopped. Let's throw this in. Just a little more chicken stock. About half to three quarters of a cup. All right, you know, I think that I can probably use my little tiny scoop. Let's start scooping. Then my hands don't have to suffer. All right, one nice big scoop right in the center. Let's move a couple of these things right out of the way. I'm going to take some cheese and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on each mushroom. Okay, um, this is going to go in the broiler, medium level for about three minutes, just until that cheese starts to melt. Okay, that did not take long at all. Let's turn that off. Oh gosh, they look wonderful. Cheese is bubbly. Take a look at that. Oh, can't wait to get my mouth around that. But it's time to look at my soup, so let's go over there. 
Okay, this is just about ready for us to do some things to it. So I'm gonna turn this off for just a moment, grab my hot pads, and bring this to my front burner. Okay, let me grab my food processor, bring it in, and we are going to food process in small batches the soup that's in the pot. Let me grab a bowl and a ladle and I'm going to start with about three ladles full. Two will work. All right, right into my food processor. And top goes on. And we're going to puree it. All right. This one is ready. Let's put that back in this bowl. And I'm going to finish the last of it. We'll be ready to do our full and finish our soup. Now it is time. We're going to finish it off with our mushrooms and I'm going to save just a few to put on the top of my soup because I think it looks great as a garnish. And we're going to put that in. Turn it back on low. We're going to let this simmer until I'm ready to serve it. So we've got the mushrooms in. I'm going to put couple tablespoons of sherry. Now don't use the kind that you get in the vinegar section. Just um, use the stuff that comes out of the wine section. I'm going to stir that in. Gives it a beautiful richness. Let that go for just a second. And now it's time for my cream. And I've got heavy cream, so one cup, and I'm going to just pour it in and start mixing. Oh, wow. This looks fabulous. We're going to come back in just a few minutes after we have a word from our sponsor. We'll make our peach full. The Coastal Kitchen would like to say thank you to our sponsors at Holden Brothers Farm Market in Chalote for supplying the fresh produce on this week's show. Swing by their indoor market located near Mile Marker 10 on Highway 17 or check them out online at HoldenBrothersFarmMarket.com. Welcome back to the Coastal Kitchen. This is a peach fool. It's a light, not so sweet dessert with lots of fruit easy to make and we're going to do it as quick as I can do it for you. Okay, I have four peaches and I have cut them up and got them all ready diced and I'm going to turn this stove on. I'm going to put a little bit of water in my pan and putting my peaches in. I've got some whipping cream and it's ready. I have put essence of almond in here, almond extract. So that goes with two tablespoons. This is marscapone cheese and I'm going to put one tablespoon of confectionery sugar right on top, give it a little quick stir and we're just about ready. The peaches have to get ready first. So let's give them just a little bit of a stir. If you have really soft peaches, you don't have to do this. But you do always have to make sure that the sugar that you use is to your taste. So you might need a little bit more than a fourth of a cup. You might need a little less. So we're just going to let this bubble away. And I'm going to show you one of the tricks of garnishing. Real easy. Just cut your peaches up, slice them like you would, take the hard part out, little bit of sugar on half. Just put it on the plate and it will wait because I'm going to have to fix three or four here because I've got some people that are hungry. 
All right, I'm going to take my whipped cream and my mascarpone cheese. And this is similar to a cream cheese. We just sweetened it up just a touch. All right, I am going to fold this together. And I don't particularly want it to um, mix in completely because it's nice to have little bites. So you can cut it in and taste all the wonderful flavors separately. All right, this is what we want. All the liquid to boil out. We're going to turn this off. Just remember, if you have soft fruit, berries, um, you don't have to go through the cooking stage, but you do want this to be soft. So we're going to put this right in my food processor. And let's puree it. That didn't take too long. Let's get this off. You can still see the steam rising. The one thing you want to do is you want to cool this down before you mix it in with your whipped cream and your mascarpone cheese. But we're just going to fold it in. So let's put it in the fridge, let it sit, and you'll see how it all turns out. All right, this has come out of the fridge. It's nice and cold now. And all I'm going to do is just pour it on top of my mixture of whipping cream and mascarpone get that in and I'm going to keep just a little bit in a bowl because I want to put some as a garnish. So let's put that right there and I'm going to start folding in. And you want little ribbons of fruit. You want to be able to see it. So don't mix it completely. Just cut it in. How easy. Now, right in the dish. And we're going to take one of our peaches, put some more sugar on the top right in, a little bit of the peach puree. Let's grab a little bit of this mint. And it's ready to go. So you can do this with peaches, you can do it with blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, Rhubarb is wonderful. What I'm going to do now is put everything out so you can see everything we've done today on our show. The challenge has been met. Be back in just a few minutes after words from our sponsor. Most people couldn't fit 200 local farms on their table. Well, that's where we come in. For the very best of everything local, Lowe's Foods. Welcome back. We have had fun today with mushrooms, all kinds. Take a look. We've got our marinated mushrooms and we've built a pickup salad around it. There are the peach fools. We've got our mushrooms that are stuffed with spicy sausage and mushroom soup, the star of the show. Well, you know, you can find us on Facebook. Just search for the Coastal Kitchen. We have recipes and all sorts of little goodies for you. I'm going to take a bite of this mushroom, but not before I say, be looking in October for the Great Collard Cook-Off. The Coastal Kitchen is sponsoring, in a benefit effort for the Wounded Warriors Project, a great event and you'll have to look for your application. All right, I'm gonna take a bite of this mushroom. Have a great day and see you next time on the Coastal Kitchen.